Hello, friends and colleagues. This is John Ross, the proud president of the Pennsylvania Principals Association and the principal of Lionville Middle School in the Downingtown Area School District. Welcome to my vlog. This is my third edition of the vlog, and this vlog is sponsored by Jostens. And you're going to hear from them in just a couple of minutes, uh, the fine products that they offer, the services that they offer to schools all over our Commonwealth. And we're very proud of our partnership with them and happy to have them as a sponsor for some of the many things that we do, some of the services that we provide as the PA Principals Association. Uh, my topic for the vlog this month, it's Super Bowl season. Football playoffs are happening right now. The NFL uh, Conference Finals are today as I'm recording this. Uh, and it made me think about some of the, you hear reference quite frequently, the coaching tree. You know, Andy Reid in Kansas City has his coaching tree, people that he's uh, mentored and they've gone on and become coaches like Doug Peterson, for example. Uh, Reed was actually a part of someone else's co coaching tree, Mike, Mike Holmgren. He, he grew out of Mike Holmgren's coaching, uh, for those who are familiar with the former coach of the Packers. Um, so thinking about that and uh, thinking about what we do as leaders, uh, I really wanted to talk about how important it is as a school leader to develop your own leadership tree. And it's a very, very similar situation in, in that, you know, you grow people and people come to work for you and they learn the ways of being a building leader. And so I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about that because, you know, I, I know uh, sometimes we hesitate to do that. Um, sometimes we either think we don't have the time to do it or we think maybe that uh, people aren't going to want to follow us in the principalship. So I wanted to talk about that for a couple of minutes and then just give some of my own perspective as to how to go about doing that. Um, you can't worry about people leaving. You know, it, it doesn't stop. Again, think about the NFL football coaches. Uh, they, they don't worry about losing their assistant coaches, their offensive coordinators or defensive coordinators. They still promote them and grow them as leaders and turn them into fantastic coaches. Um, that's how they get that experience to know that they're ready to go on and, and become head coaches of their own program. So you have to make the most when you have great people, when you have great leaders, uh, you have to do everything you can to promote them and show them the way and know that there's a very good chance they are going to move on. Maybe they won't. Maybe you'll be able to find a position for them that they'll be happy with, uh, but you can't hold back. You need to, to show them and, and help them learn uh, everything that you can share with them. And you learn from them along the way too. Uh, you, I'm sure you've had this experience where uh, people that you're mentoring are actually sharing some of their knowledge with you. So uh, you can't think of it uh, from a perspective of worrying about them leaving you. Uh, the other thing that I, I think might hinder people from doing this is just our own affect about the job. Think about especially right now with everything that we're dealing with uh, and, and everything that's burdened burdening you as a school leader and weighing on your mind uh, on a daily basis. Um, you have to sometimes put up a good front and put a good face on for your crew uh, because you want people, first of all, you want your entire staff to, to know that, you know, you've got a positive attitude and a positive mindset about things. But if you're trying to encourage people to be school leaders, uh, you certainly don't want to give the impression that the job stinks and that it's not something that they want to go into. Uh, especially if you're pushing them uh, towards the principalship. Uh, we all know that there is a teacher shortage right now, and, and it seems to be getting worse every year. Uh, whatever the opposite of exponential growth, that's what it's doing. It, it's shrinking exponentially, maybe, the teacher pool. And what that's doing naturally is it's mean, it, it means there's fewer principals. So the principal pool is decreasing um, each year. So we all know uh, that this is a problem that's not going away. And if there's fewer teachers, there's going to be fewer principals. And so it's super important now more than ever, I think, to really try and grow those people and show them the way so that when the time comes and we're desperate for school leaders, desperate to have great principals, uh, that there's a pool of candidates to, to attract those people from. So that's kind of my reasoning behind it. I'm going to take a break and share a little message from the folks at Jostens. And when I come back, I'm gonna to talk to you about how I think you can, as a leader, uh, grow your leadership tree. Be right back. At Jostens, we believe your school brand is more than what your school looks like. It's what your community stands for, what your climate feels like, and how your culture embodies it. 
That's part of the Jocelyn's difference. Schoolmark is Jocelyn's full service school branding program that helps you capture and convey the essence of your school brand by helping you define, design, and live your school brand every day. That's Schoolmark's trusted approach from your Jocelyn's trusted partners of helping you develop and activate an inspiring school brand that engages students, faculty, and community. For more information on Schoolmark, contact your Jocelyn sales representative or reach us at schoolmark at jocelyns.com. All right, again, thanks to the great folks at Jocelyns for being one of our sponsors of the PA Principals Association. So now talking about growing your principalship leadership tree, how do you go about doing that? Well, it all begins with doing a great job of hiring teachers. You know, when you're looking at the, at the candidate pool, when you're uh, considering people to hire in your building that you're going to have that kind of close contact with, leadership should, should certainly be something that you're looking out for. If you hire great teachers and then, you know, maybe not hit them with it right off the bat when they're first starting teaching, especially if they're younger, uh, but trying to encourage them to, to pursue that, you know, they've got to go back and take classes anyway. So uh, if there's somebody that you think is going to be a great principal, encouraging them to follow uh, in your footsteps when it comes to the principalship and giving them positions in your building, trying to find ways in your building to, uh, to, to put them out in front of the staff. Um, if you have curriculum leadership positions or like me, you're in a middle school, you have team leadership permission or grade uh, team leadership positions or grade level leadership positions, things like that, where you're trying to promote them. It doesn't, it don't go to the default of thinking it has to be the most veteran person. You know, many times they are the best candidate, but, but don't sell the, the younger folks short uh, because if you can get somebody that's working toward leadership and give that kind, give them that kind of experience, uh, it's going to pay dividends for you and for them uh, in the long run. So uh, no matter how long they've been teaching, you should be trying to promote those kinds of people into positions within your building. And then on a district level, you know, when the opportunity presents itself and they're looking for teacher volunteers, but sometimes they need a little encouragement. Sometimes you have to go to them and talk to them and say, hey, the district's forming this committee on this thing or that thing. And I think that's really something you should get involved in. That, that you know, goes a real long way with a lot of people to, when their boss comes to them and says something like that. So um, I, I really believe strongly, obviously I'm dedicating time to this, but I, I think the problem, not the problem, I think the mistake, let's say, that we make sometimes is that you know, there's a lot of attention paid uh, to when, when we pursue higher degrees. And that's good. It's well-deserved. Um, it's a lot of work to, to get uh, a higher degree, uh, especially when you're working full-time at the same time. So we, we take a lot of pride in that. And uh, th that's something that's certainly well-deserved. But I, I strongly believe that there should be an equal amount of time and an equal amount of attention paid to your leadership tree. I, I think that's something as a leader that you should look at and and take a, give it some careful consideration. You know, what have I done as a leader to try to promote uh, future leaders within my building? What does my leadership tree look like right now? No matter how many years you've been uh, a principal, what, what, what have I done? What have I done to try to get people into those positions and give some serious consideration and think about, you know, is that something I need to spend more time on? Actually take the time to write it down. You don't have to make a tree out of it, although that would be pretty cool if you made your own actual tree, uh, drawing of a tree, but just write a list. You know, who are, who are the people that you've promoted, that you've taken from positions where they weren't in leadership and you've put them in leadership positions, whether it's in your building as a building leader, or hopefully even they've gone on to become uh, assistant principals and principals, uh, central office, maybe even they've surpassed you. Maybe they've become assistant superintendents and superintendents because you know that was something they, they wanted to uh, pursue. But we, we spend an awful lot of time, justifiably so, uh, focusing on growing ourselves as leaders and, and pursuing degrees. And I think if we spent an equal amount of time, at least an equal amount of time, uh, trying to grow our people and trying to grow future leaders, uh, I think in the long run, our profession would be much better off for it. So uh, I encourage you as a principal to take the time to do that. Give some careful reflection and thought to who your building leaders are and who the people are that you've promoted and who you're hiring and who you're trying to put in those positions and uh, encourage them. As I said, uh, one more time, 
You have to go out and you have to have that conversation many times, many times. They worry that they're not cut out for it and uh, trying to give them, you know, some real life experience and some real feedback uh, is going to go a long way toward promoting that for them. So grow your leadership tree as a principal. All right, folks, that's all I have for this month. Uh, thanks so much for your time and for your attention. Thanks to Justin's again uh, for being one of our diamond sponsors at the PA Principals Association. I uh, hope everybody's working hard and uh, surviving everything that we're going through uh, with COVID-19 right now. Hopefully there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel and uh, good times are ahead. So thanks everybody for your support and I'll see you next month.